Has the market failed housing? Has the market failed you? Can the market deliver the housing we need? Or is market economics just not suitable for housing? Let me know what your thoughts are on the subject in the comments below. And also any questions, put them in the comments as well. Currently, we live in a market economy and we expect supply to meet demand. We have a large amount of demand for housing, high prices to buy and to rent, but the market is just not supplying enough to meet that demand. Does that mean the market has failed or is something else going on? In very broad, simple terms, it's easy to say supply and demand economics doesn't apply to housing. But that's plainly not the case. Supply and demand economics and the law of supply and demand perfectly explain what's actually happening to the housing market and the law of supply and demand illustrate why we're having so many issues with the housing market. Anyone that believes the law of supply and demand doesn't apply to housing just may not be familiar enough with how supply and demand curves work. But then if the law of supply and demand does apply to housing, why is the market not creating a balance and delivering more supply? Why is the free market economy not able to address the demand for housing? And why is the market failing on housing so badly? If there is all this demand, surely there is profit there for the market to be made and the market will find a way to meet that demand. The market has failed to meet demand and that is a fact. The market has failed to supply the right products. It has failed to provide affordable homes. It has failed to provide uh, development funding and reasonable construction costs. The market has failed in multiple ways to come up with innovative solutions for construction or funding, but why? It is fair to say that the supply of housing is more complex than let's say the supply of grain. There are regulations and standards that are needed to prevent a total free for all in building. And there are requirements in planning and building regs, which can be easily taken into account when you apply them to the law of supply and demand, and they can be built into a supply and demand curve. However, since the 2008 crash, a lot of barriers to supply have been put in place on top of the market, including the housing need assessment for each council. And each council have used this to cap the number of houses that they approve from a planning point of view, rather than setting minimum targets. These caps have dramatically reduced the availability of residential zone land in many high demand areas, which has led to a massive undersupply of housing in those areas. Therefore, capping the market's ability to deliver housing in many high demand areas, which inflates the value of the existing housing stock in those areas, which means the market is not able to keep up with supply due to government enforced caps on development. Dublin is now seen internationally as one of the hardest places in the world to get planning permission for housing just behind San Francisco. There are so many boxes for developers to tick, uh, which makes it nearly impossible for them to get everything right. And half of all planning permissions granted in Dublin currently are at judicial review, which adds to the delays and costs. Large schemes at best take five years to get through the planning process, and most of them are taking nearly close to 10 years to get all the way to completion. The market is not being allowed to respond to demand the way it should be. Developers are getting increasingly frustrated with the planning system. Many of them are actually walking away from the industry, which means that there's a huge amount of knowledge and skills walking away too. The planning system is currently a major barrier to supply, which is leading to a very dysfunctional market. These planning barriers can be illustrated on supply and demand curves. It effectively means the supply curve is becoming more vertical. And if we really want housing, to be supplied in more greater numbers, we really need to force that supply curve to a more horizontal line if we want to create more supply. But back to the question, can the market deliver the housing we need or is market economics just not suitable for the housing market? To answer this question, I think it is important to understand the basics of supply and demand and market equilibriums. Economics basically is the study of scarcity and how resources are used. So it implies that there is a scarcity of something. And in this case, we're talking about housing. You cannot just make endless amounts of housing without using up other resources. 
It also means that nothing can be produced without a cost. There's either cost to labor, material, land, or services. When you look at a supply and demand curve, you will see that the curves do not touch the price or quantity lines. And it is assumed that raw materials or products or services or even housing cannot be provided for free and there is a cost to providing them. Meaning not everyone will be able to afford a product or service. And that doesn't just relate to housing, that's all products or services, cars, etc. Not everyone can afford the base cost for it. And the market will never be able to provide for those people. It's just not possible for the market to be able to provide housing for free or below cost. It never has and it never will be. Just like in the way that farmers can't produce food for free, the supply and demand curve account for this by not allowing the supply and demand curve actually touch the price or quantity lines. The gaps on the bottom of the supply and demand charts illustrate the section of population that the market can never serve. The market could never provide for this section of the population. The market hasn't failed them. The state has actually failed them. When you look at the state's interference in the housing market over recent years and apply them to supply and demand curves and the law of supply and demand, the markets react exactly as predicted and exactly as you can illustrate on supply and demand curves. From the planning perspective, you have the housing for need assessment, which caps the number of housing and limits the number of zoned land. You also have councillors, TDs objecting to housing. You have delays in onboard Panola. You also have TDs and councillors and residential groups. You don't agree with onboard Panola's decisions and decide to take them to court for judicial reviews, which delays construction and adds costs. When you add all this up, Ireland becomes one of the most difficult places to get planning permission in the world. And the market responds accordingly. The law of supply and demand plays out exactly as predicted it would. More rules and regulations make it harder to supply new housing. The same can be said for the rental market when you add in rental caps, eviction bans, bans on co-living, restricting development of student accommodation to large developments only and adding 9% on the cost of buying residential uh, rental accommodation by adding stamp duty increases by 9% or more. You make it harder and more costly and therefore supply of the rental stock becomes more expensive. Rental markets reacted in line with the law of supply and demand. Supply becomes more costly, meaning the supply line shifts up, meaning that there's less supplied to the market and that supply is provided at a higher price. The rental market reacted exactly how the law of supply and demand predicted. If we know the law of supply and demand applies to housing, should we not be using that economics to our advantage? If we want more housing and more affordable housing, government policy should be focused on leveling out the supply curve. A lot of the recent knee-jerk reactions to populist ideas have forced the supply curve in the wrong direction, making things even worse. The law of supply and demand tells us in order to provide more housing and more affordable homes, you need to level off that supply curve. And you can do that by removing barriers to development and help reduce the cost of construction. If I actually had a blackboard here behind me, I'd try to illustrate some of those supply and demand curves. If that is something that you'd be interested in, in terms of how government policy or how the market has shifted, in terms of how those curves shift and how they impact on pricing, let me know. I'll try to get a range of blackboard and make that video for you. So let me know in the comments below if that is something you'd be interested in. I would make the case that the market has reacted exactly as the law of supply and demand would predict. Private developers or the market has not provided enough housing to meet the demand because barriers have been placed in their way. The state, all TDs, councillors, planners and other state bodies have placed too many barriers in the way of the market and the market can no longer respond to demand because of those barriers. In summary, the market hasn't failed. The market has done exactly how the law of supply and demand would predict the market would do. The state has failed in providing a suitable marketplace to deliver more homes. I could go on for hours on this topic and talk about the economics of the housing market, 
but that's where I am going to leave it for today's video. If you do want me to kind of illustrate the, how the supply and demand curves actually apply to housing, please let me know. I will try arrange a blackboard for that one. Let me know what your thoughts are on the topic. Any questions, put them down in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. Also, if you agree or disagree with me on this video, let me know. Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.